When you're dealing with responsiveness on websites, sometimes you need to be able to combine different CSS units to get the best results. That's where the calc CSS function comes in. My name is Tim and today I'm going to show you how to use the calc function to level up your responsiveness and make your work a little bit easier. Before we continue, I do have to mention that to truly take advantage of this, you need a solid understanding of how CSS units work. I have an awesome video in which I go through the different CSS units, what they are and how you can use them. If you haven't seen it yet and if you don't know how units in Elementor and WordPress in general work, go watch that video first and then come back to this one. The link will be in the description. To use the calc function, all you have to do is go into whichever element and whichever part of that element you're trying to use it for. One way you can use this for, for example, is the width of your container. So you're gonna go into your container, go under layout, and then we're gonna select this little pen icon. Once you have it selected, you can use any unit you want and with the calc function, you can even combine units. So let's type in calc followed by round brackets. Inside the brackets, we're gonna type in our first unit. Let's say I want the width to be 20 viewport width plus 100 pixels. It's important that you make sure that the spaces are placed correctly, one before and one after the plus. So what does this kind of width mean in practice? I have two containers here. The top one just has the width set to 20 viewport width, and the bottom one is our calc one. You can see that the bottom one is wider, exactly a hundred pixels wider, in fact. The beauty of this is that if we make the viewport larger or smaller, the 20 viewport width is gonna adjust accordingly while the 100 pixels will stay the exact same. That way we can ensure our container is never too small because when it gets to the point where 20 viewport width would be too small, we still have the added 100 pixels. Now, of course, in this example, calc is kind of useless, but we're gonna get into how you can use this and have it be actually very helpful in just a second. You can also subtract values by typing in a minus instead of a plus. And you can multiply the first value by typing in the asterisk symbol followed by a number. And you can divide them in the same way by using the forward slash symbol, but you can't multiply or divide different units. If this video is helpful, please make sure you hit those like and subscribe buttons. It really does help me out a whole lot. Let's go through two use cases so you get an idea of what exactly this is capable of, because if you haven't used it before, it can be difficult to really see the value in this. The first way I like to use this is for container gaps. Let's say I have a container with two containers nested inside of it and I want the gap between them to be responsive. I set it to six viewport width. On large resolutions, the gap looks fine. As the resolution gets smaller, and this is still desktop by the way, the gap becomes smaller than I want it to be. And the smaller the viewport gets, the smaller the gap gets. So I can set it to three viewport width plus 110 pixels. That way it's gonna look nearly identical on large screens, but it's still gonna be significantly larger on smaller screens. And it will still be responsive and get smaller as the screen gets smaller. This is an extreme example, but here's a live website I built where I use this method for container gaps. It's just that little bit more responsive. The second way I like to use this involves negative margins. A great example is this website which I built recently. Actually here, with the way I used it, it was pretty much a requirement. The circles in the middle are gonna help me make my point beautifully. You're gonna notice that the circles along with the text are vertically center aligned. And if I scroll down a bit, we have a container with a green background color and some text and it's overlapping the container above it. But the top and the bottom padding between the header and the circles and between the circles in this container is identical. And more importantly, if I make the resolution smaller, it stays identical. If I only used percent or VH or whichever responsive unit, it would become uneven fairly quickly. But by using the calc function, I set the bottom padding of this large container to be 25%, which is the same as the top one, plus 150 pixels. Then I set my negative margin for this container at minus 100 pixels. So as the screen gets smaller, because it's set to percent, so does the padding, but it stays even on the top and on the bottom. And the overlap always stays identical because it's set to minus 100 pixels. If I go into my inspect tool and just make the bottom padding of this container 25% instead of using calc, here's what happens. It's not very responsive, is it? 
So what I'm doing basically is I'm combining a responsive unit percent with an absolute unit pixels to get a result that I just couldn't get otherwise. And I'm sure there are a bunch of other ways you can use this and that I will use this in the future that I haven't even considered yet. It's really cool and really easy and it gives you more control over your website, which is something that's always great to have. If this video was helpful and if you want to see more videos like this, first make sure you hit those like and subscribe buttons and then go check out this video next. If you found this one interesting, I guarantee you're gonna find that one very interesting as well. Thank you for watching.